people die owing to the inclement weather during the past 24 hours. The number of affected people exceed 10,000. Total number of recovered COVID-19 cases exceeds 500. Farmers lament about the shortage of fertilizer in the country. Shooting in Katunaika killed one person. More murders reported in Horana, Aturugiriya and Batiklo. Political views on the Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact. A very good evening and a warm welcome to Primetime News on TV1. Two deaths have been reported during the past 24 hours owing to the adverse weather condition in Sri Lanka. Now, several parts of the island uh, has witnessed heavy showers and around 1,805 people have been affected. A woman had died after a mound of earth had collapsed onto her residence in the Valdenia area in Kegol yesterday. Two people had been inside the residence at the time of the incident. However, one person had escaped unhurt. Officers attached to the Beirikal army camp, the police and area residents had taken steps to rescue the victims. Meanwhile, landslides were also reported in the Varakapula and Udukumbara areas along the Colombo Candy Main Road. A lorry which had been parked on the road had tumbled off a 20-meter precipice due to the landslide. Several houses in the Helmada area in Kegol were inundated as the Kuda Oya had overflowed due to heavy rains. A 48-year-old man who had been residing at a house in the vicinity of the river was washed away due to strong currents. The house had been severely damaged due to the inclement weather. Our correspondent reported that the man who was rescued by special task force officers while floating atop a bamboo mat had died after being hospitalized. More than 30 houses in the Halamada area have been inundated due to flooding in the area. Heavy rains were experienced in the Marvanala and Arunayaka areas since Thursday until this morning. Water levels of the Moya had risen as a result of this situation. Two lorries and ten houses in the Kongola area have been submerged in flood waters as the Koskotoya and the Abari Canal had overflowed in the Mavatagama area in Kurunagala. Our correspondent reported that more than 300 acres of agricultural fields in the Kongola and the Mutakota areas had been submerged in flood waters. The water levels of the Ging River have been rising as a result of heavy rains experienced in the Badegama area in the Gaul district since last evening. Water levels in the river had risen to 2.75 meters at 11.15 a.m. today. Flooding was reported across agricultural lands on the banks of the Ging River, the Ganegama, Navakkada, Babarahikada and Kuttiyavatta areas. Meanwhile, the Ambalangur Urban Council had taken steps to widen the estuary in the Uravatta area in Ambalangur as the Halvatura, Ronnadua, Talgasgoda and Galdua areas could be flooded if the estuary is blocked. Meanwhile, several low-lying areas in the Vakvala area in the Gold district have been flooded due to the inclement weather in the area. Garbage was seen strewn on the Vakvala bridge that runs across the Ging River. Water levels of the Kalani River near the Nagalagam Street had risen to 3 metres at 10 a.m. today. Dredging activities had taken place along an estuary of the Nilwala River in the Totamuna area which had been blocked this morning. This was with the participation of Disaster Management Centre officers in Mathara. The flowing of water had been obstructed by a large layer of sand which was witnessed near the estuary at around 11.40 am. The water levels of the Nilwala River had also risen due to heavy rains. Spill gates at the Vimala Surendra Reservoir were opened after heavy rains were experienced in Hatton last night. Two out of the three spill gates in the Lakshapana Reservoir were also opened. Meanwhile, our correspondent reported that transportation along the Hatton Norton Main Road in the Palekuda area had been obstructed after a mound of earth had collapsed onto the road. A house in the Diagala area in Hatton had been damaged after a rock had fallen onto it last night. Four 
more spill gates in the Mahaveli Dam in Polgola were opened to prevent flooding in Kandy and the surrounding areas. Irrigation engineers in Mahaveli have advised residents of downstream areas to exercise caution as 8,000 cubic feet of water is released per second. Certain areas in Giri Ulla were inundated after heavy rains were experienced last night. More than 200 people belonging to 65 families who had been residing in the area have been affected due to this situation. The Avisavilake Gold Road in the Kotia Kumbare area had been inundated due to heavy rains. 21 houses in the new Valikanda village, the Samurdi village and the youth village were damaged due to heavy rains experienced last night. Officials attached to the disaster management center in these areas arrived to inspect the damages. Meanwhile, the water levels in wells located in the coastal areas of the Ampara and Batiklo districts have decreased unusually last night. Residents of Kalmune, Sindamarudu, Nindavur and several other villages had left their homes in fear of this situation. When we checked our well, we saw that there was less water. The people left their homes out of fear. When sea water levels rise, the level of groundwater will also rise. When sea water levels drop, then groundwater levels will also reduce. This is a common occurrence. The people do not have to fear about an earthquake or a tsunami. The Department of Meteorology has informed fishermen to avoid setting to seas until further notice is given. Due to the cyclonic storm forming in the Bay of Bengal, all fishermen have been requested not to set to the seas until further notice. As a result, a large number of segments of fishermen in the country avoided engaging in fishing activities today. The Sri Lanka Navy took steps to turn back a group of fishermen that had headed into the seas of the Trincomalee coast earlier today. This was a situation at the Trincomalee Fisheries Harbour. The Met Department said the low pressure area over the southeast Bay of Bengal may develop into a depression and is likely to intensify into a cyclonic storm during the next 24 hours. Due to the influence of the system, the prevailing showery conditions over the island, particularly in the southwestern part, is likely to continue further. The Met Department forecasts showers or thunder showers of 150 millimeters to occur in the southern, western, Sabargamo and central provinces. The National Building Research Organization has classified districts at risk of landslides under three stages. The first sector will consist of areas that saw more than 75 millimeters of rain over the last 24 hours. If the current weather pattern and heavy rains continue, area residents are requested to remain vigilant for landslides, earth slips, sinkholes and the risk of boulders being displaced. The second sector are deemed as risky areas. These include areas of heavy rainfall exceeding 100 millimeters within the last 24 hours. People are asked to remain vigilant to risk of landslides, earth slips, sinkholes and the risk of boulders being displaced. The third sector is marked with the color red and is the region from which people must evacuate. These include areas of heavy rainfall exceeding 100 millimeters within the last 24 hours. No such areas have been reported as yet, however. Residents of these areas are advised to evacuate and head to safe areas. Senior citizens who visited the post office in Hatton today to obtain their allowance had to leave the premises empty-handed. The post office, which is generally open for a few hours on a Saturday, was unfortunately closed today. These locals claim that the post office had not informed them of its closure, which resulted in the inconvenience of many senior citizens. Landslide warnings were also issued to several areas. Take a look at more local news. Farmers are queuing up these days to buy fertilizer. Farmers in Dambulla are also helpless as the seeds they had received were deemed to be of low quality. In Kalpitiya, chili farmers who are unable to put the crops to market are now facing several issues. 
Vendarua is a traditional agricultural village which dates back to the period of the kings in the central province of Kandy. This village has about 250 acres of land that was cultivated during the Yala season. Over 350 families make their living through farming. As with a number of areas across the island, Vendarua also faces the problem of not having sufficient supply of fertilizer. They allege that the authorities have not come to the area to inquire about fertilizer situation, even though they have started cultivations. This is the manner in which farmers in the Kaikaval area in Mathale were queuing up last night to buy fertilizer at concessionary prices. However, the Mathale district officers of the Consumer Affairs Authority had arrived at the site following a complaint that the fertilizer was being sold at a higher price. A heated situation arose between a group of customers and the employees at the fertilizer shop as a result. Farmers said that in order to preserve their crops, fertilizer was needed on time, even at higher prices. They said first and then the second. If we don't have that facility from the government, no one will care what the company is doing. We will buy without considering the price. We would like to buy at the control price, but we need it on time. That's what a cultivation requires. One is sold for a high price, and when you take that bundle of fertilizer, they ask you to buy another one. It can't be done as per our law. On the farmer's side, we are not looking for money. We are trying to get the material we need. We are the Consumer Affairs Authority. We stand for the consumer, not for the businessman. You can't sell at a higher price just because of a shortage. Issue the fertilizer to them in the order of the queue. But there is no place for a black market anywhere. That's our job. The Consumer Affairs Authority instructed the shop owner to sell the fertilizer at reasonable prices. At a media briefing yesterday, the Commission of Agrarian Development said the prevailing fertilizer issue in the island can be solved within a period of two weeks. Though approval was granted to distribute fertilizer to all farmers simultaneously, there was an issue with financing it. The funds were obtained by releasing the fixed deposit maintained by the agrarian services committees. I believe the fertilizer issue can be solved within the next two weeks. Approximately 250,000 metric tons of big onions are consumed in Sri Lanka on an annual basis, of which approximately 20,000 tons are imported from India and Pakistan. Despite Sri Lanka's ability to cultivate big onions in its homeland, nearly 12,000 tons of big onions were imported to the country during the past two months. Against such a backdrop, big onion farmers in Dambulla are facing several issues due to the purchasing of seeds that lack proper standards. Matale is one of the many districts where big onions are cultivated in Sri Lanka. Big onion farmers in this district invested their cultivation, hoping to make ends meet by reaping the rewards of their hard work. But today these farmers are struggling with numerous hardships. Due to the prevailing situation in the island, seeds imported from foreign suppliers are yet to arrive in the country. The only seeds available in local markets are adulterated or those that have expired. Farmers claim authenticity of seeds can only be established once the plants start to grow.
chili farmers in the Kalpitiya Peninsula are struggling to continue their cultivation activities. With the wholesale price of chilies plummeting in the local market, these farmers are now on the brink of abandoning their cultivation. <laughs> These farmers who pay 20 rupees to their employees for breaking off a kilo of chilies receive less than 40 rupees for each kilo sold. These farmers urge the government to intervene in this matter and to provide them with a fair price for their produce. As mentioned in our bulletin before, landslide warnings have been issued to several areas in Sri Lanka. Landslide warnings have been issued to nine districts in the country. They are Gaul, Matale, Ratnapura, Kalutara, Matara, Colombo, Kegol, Kurunagala and Kandy. Senior scientists at the National Building Research Organization, Dr. Vasanta Senadira, expressed the following views. Level 1 warnings have been issued to the Gaul, Akmimana, Bope, Koddala, Nagoda, Tawalama and the Nelua areas in the Gaul district. Level 2 warnings have been issued to the areas in the Baddegama Divisional Secretariat. Landslide warnings have also been issued to the Ukuela Divisional Secretariat in the Matale district, the Heliagoda, Kuruvita and Ayagama Divisional Secretariats in the Ratnapura district, the Agalawatta, Palindanuvara, Bulat Singhala, Walallawita, Horana, Ingiria and Matugama Divisional Secretariat in the Kalutara district and also the Pitabedura and Kotapola areas in the Matara district. Parliamentarians who were given the mandate of resolving the problems of the people have found themselves in the midst of a debate on reconvening parliament. The president believes that he has been constitutionally vested with the powers to implement his work plan. If the opposition wants to challenge it, they can go before court and seek redress. However, they will not do that because their conscience knows that the verdict will not be given in their favour. They are trying to create a public discussion about it by blaming the government of doing something unconstitutional. This president is clearly not following the constitution. There is a cabinet in the country. He ignores the cabinet and the prime minister. In 2018, we went before court over a constitutional violation and rectified the situation. In this instance, we believe that the Supreme Court will consider this case and provide a ruling within a few weeks to resolve this issue. It is evident that the country cannot move forward without a parliament while violating the constitution. We wish to state that the country is heading into a dictatorship as a result of violating the constitution. <laughs> Once the umpire raises his finger, it is ruled out. When he raises both his hands, it's a six. The decision can be contested later. If the Elections Commission has decided that the election should be postponed, the President has not violated the Constitution. A strong leader does not take such issues before court to aggravate the situation and destroy the financial strength of the country. <laughs> Foreign countries did not wish to provide the country at least a single rupee as the government has destroyed democracy by closing down parliament completely and also by managing funds in an autocratic manner. We remember how funds were looted in the aftermath of the tsunami. Leaders of foreign countries have also realized that the government does not disclose its sources of funding. That is a blatant lie. On which occasion has the international community accused us of violating the constitution? When did they say the government does not abide by the constitution? When did they say that the president's conduct is wrong? It is these people who are sending out such messages to the international community. If a person was elected by the people, how can he become a dictator? Are the people saying that Gotabe Rajapaksha is a dictator? No one says that. <laughs> If an MP does not attend parliamentary sittings for around three months, the parliamentary seat will be taken away. It has been more than three months since parliament was dissolved. So we question if this situation can continue. The main issue is that this government has completely disregarded the constitution. The Korean citizens handed over their jewellery to the country's treasury in a bid to uplift the economy. They wanted to rise on their own without depending on anyone else. We need to have the same patriotic feeling. So please prepare yourself to go beyond the comfort zones and fulfill your duty towards the country.
ಮುಕ್ತ ಕರನ್ನ ಸೂದಾನ ಇನ್ನು The people had not been affected to the extent that they had to pawn all their belongings. The government is receiving a huge income. We have to examine the people who became rich during the last 10 years. We have to start off with the Rajapaksas. If anyone has looted funds from the central bank or any other institution, they should also be examined. If we can do that, the people will be willing to pawn all their belongings and support the government. The funds received by the government and the expenses should be approved in parliament. However, they are afraid of reconvening parliament. හැබැයි මේ පාර්ලිමේන්තුව කැඳවීමට මේ අය බය ඇයි කියන ප්‍රශ්නේ තියෙනවා. Taking a look at the COVID-19 situation in Sri Lanka, another 43 people who tested positive for the virus have recovered, increasing the number of people who recovered from the virus. According to data released by the health authorities, 520 patients have now recovered fully. 420 patients remain hospitalized. Meanwhile 12 more patient, patients who tested positive for COVID-19 were reported this evening the total number of COVID-19 infected patients in the country increased to 949 Meanwhile PCR tests were carried out on residents of Bandara Nayakamavatha in Colombo today The tests were carried out by the Colombo Municipal Council 50 people who were in the area when it came under lockdown were also subjected to these tests Meanwhile all vehicles entering the Avissa Villa town were inspected today temperature checks were also carried out on passengers who had been travelling by bus me corona virus bilibanda vyaptiya at a time when the spread of the corona virus has been controlled there is a risk that the virus could be spread by those consuming illicit liquor and narcotics we are going to implement a plan to curb the consumption of illicit liquor and narcotics in the western province it is the colombo and gampaha districts which are under curfew the people based on the last digit of the nic's can travel to the nearest store to purchase essentials and medicines nearly 5000 people are undergoing self quarantine in the western province our duties will reduce slightly only once that is over we will approve leave for expectant mothers and those who are sick eva game garbhani tatte pasu inayata api jiwan onmoda karana denawa the covid-19 healthcare and social security fund has received more than 1 billion rupees in donations taking to his twitter handle president kota bay rajpaksa thanked all those who had contributed towards the fund the tweet noted that the funds would be utilized with complete transparency and will be audited in due course the president said that these details would be shared with the public in the near future leader of the samagi janabala vega sajid premadasa expressed the following views via social media today the world bank has granted sri lanka a concessionary loan of 128 million us dollars to develop our health sector we urge the present government to utilize these funds to empower and develop our country's health system we need more icu beds and we must provide our medical staff with sufficient protective equipment we can utilize the manufacturing sector in our country to manufacture these equipment the indonesian government has set up a mechanism to attract us investors and other businesses deviating from china this mechanism has proven to be a success sri lanka must follow such a mechanism as well we must attract investments that are divesting from china due to the prevailing situation we must construct manufacturing parks and incorporate more technology into the investment process may i to be appear at the ginna gan pahadili beda pirira kriya atma karanna to the pathfinder foundation has handed over a report on a new economic vision for post covid 19 sri lanka to former minister basil rajapaksha yesterday The report which was earlier presented to President Gotabaya Rajapaksa was handed over to the former minister at Temple Trees yesterday. The report was compiled by a group of representatives of academia research institutions and the business community chaired by the former governor of the Central Bank Indrajit Kumaraswamy was convened by the Pathfinder Foundation to examine the economic implications of the COVID-19 pandemic and a way forward for Sri Lanka. The report notes that the evolving economic scenario for Sri Lanka could unfold to be even worse than the most difficult time during the 30 year civil conflict. It is said the focus should be on protecting human life, constructing a bridge to restore economic stability in the short run and laying a sound foundation for robust, sustainable and inclusive growth in the medium term. 
The report added that a second priority must be attached to building fiscal and external reserve buffers to increase resilience by de-risking the economy going forward. According to the report, Sri Lanka's third priority is that the investment climate needs improvement so that the private sector can restructure businesses. Presenting a policy matrix, a study group has presented short-term solutions to nine key issues faced by Sri Lanka. It suggests that Sri Lanka identifies priority sectors which require earliest possible release from restrictions on movement. The graph suggests the slow implementation of funded infrastructure projects. It has also recommended to create more conducive conditions to meet business cash flow requirements. On to some news from the Central Bank. Foreign investors returned to Sri Lanka government securities this week, the first time in four months. Government securities saw a net inflow of 300,000 rupees during the week ending 15th May 2020, reversing the trend witnessed since the week ending 24th January when the global pandemic started. According to Central Bank data, the outstanding stock of treasury bills and treasury bonds held by foreigners has declined by 3.93% to 949.4 million rupees so far this month. Since the first week of March this year, foreign holding in local bond markets have declined by approximately 60 billion rupees due to weak investor sentiments owing to the global outbreak of COVID-19. Foreign investments in the Columbus Stock Exchange including primary and secondary market transactions, recorded a net outflow of six million US dollars during February this year. On a cumulative basis, the Columbus Stock Exchange has recorded a net outflow of 22 million US dollars in the first two months of 2020. The trade deficit widened in February 2020 compared to February 2019, as expenditure on imports increased at a faster pace than the increase in earnings from exports. Back to some local news. Next up is Crime Watch. A person has died in a shooting that took place in the Mahagama area in Katunaika. The shooting had taken place owing to a personal dispute last night. The victim had been travelling on a motorcycle along with his brother at the time of the incident. I was heading towards the shop with my brother when the shooting occurred. That is all I remember. They targeted me, but it was my brother who got shot. My two sons went to a nearby shop on a motorbike. Then a person called Ralia was seen with a weapon. I don't know whether it was a pistol or a gun. When the shooting was carried out, my son who died fell off the motorcycle. Another person chased my other son with a sword. The victim has been identified as a 38-year-old bachelor of Mahagama. Police have launched an operation to locate the shooter who has been identified. Two people have been murdered at a boarding facility of a factory in the Armanagol area in Horna. Police said that three people had been attacked by iron hammers during a dispute between two groups. The deceased victims have been identified as 33 and 53-year-olds who are residents of Hettipola and Kegol. Another person who had been critically injured in the incident has been transferred to the National Hospital after being admitted to the Horan Hospital. Our correspondent reported that a suspect who was arrested over the incident had been remanded for 14 days. A woman was found murdered near a housing complex in Atrugiria. Police suspect that the killing had taken place as a result of a personal dispute. Our correspondent said that the victim had been stabbed to death using a sharp weapon. The victim has been identified as a 37-year-old resident of Atrugiria. Police have launched an investigation to identify the suspects. A 29-year-old man has been murdered in the Kartankudi area in Batiklo. Our correspondent reported that the victim had left the residence after receiving a phone call at around 7.30 p.m. Relatives who had searched the area as he had not returned home had discovered the man lying on the road with multiple lacerations. Police said that the victim had died after being hospitalized. The reason for the murder is yet to be ascertained. Police noted that investigations are underway to arrest the suspect who had fled the area. Various views were expressed regarding the American Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact in the political arena today.
Yesterday, Propaganda Secretary of the Janata Vimukti Perumuna Vijita Herat urged the government to express its stance on the agreement. When this matter is inquired from the cabinet spokesperson, he does not respond to that. He is speechless. We are asking the government to express their official stance regarding the MCC agreement. Are they going to go ahead with it or not? Before the election, they said that they will not sign the MCC agreement. Do not sign the agreement. The people gave them the mandate to abstain from signing it. Therefore, the government does not have the legal or moral right to sign the agreement. Based on the reaction of the cabinet spokesman, we can assume that the government is trying to sign the agreement after amending it. The world has turned upside down due to the current situation. The global economy has been affected. At a time when we are trying to move forward as a country, we can assume that the entities which once tried to enter into unfavorable agreements with us will now attempt to enter into favorable agreements. The MCC agreement was viewed as an extremely dangerous one in the past. However, no sooner than the presidential election was over, Gaman Pillar said that 70% of the agreement is good and that they will negotiate on the remaining 30%. We saw that the respectable Mahasangha are attempting to create divisions in the country. They said that visas will be obtained from the U.S. to visit the Sri Mahabodhi and the Ruan Valley Sire. They also said that a strip of land from Trincomalee to Katanaika will have to be sold to the U.S. It is by such tales that they brought the discussion of the agreement to the forefront during the presidential election. We are confident that Kotabe Rajpaksa will sign the agreement. The opposition is shedding crocodile tears over the MCC agreement. The agreement that was about to be signed by the United National Party will not be signed under the administration of Gotabia Rajapaksa and Mahinda Rajapaksa. That has been said very clearly. We are not ready to sign the MCC agreement if it contains clauses regarding land ownership, irrespective of the other clauses that it may contain. <laughs> Gota Bay Rajapaksa or Mahinda Rajapaksa should publicly declare that they do not want the MCC agreement and that they would not sign it. Neither one of them have spoken about it. Instead, a few of the henchmen were asked to say that they do not want the MCC agreement as it betrays the country and that the people cannot go on pilgrimage to Andhradhapura. That is what was said before the election. However, both of them did not comment on it. They have appointed a committee. This committee will now recommend to make a few amendments to it and obtain the grant. That is the reality. Those residing in urban areas may not understand the gravity of the human elephant conflict. News First has continuously reported on this matter as we understand the importance of the lives of humans as well as the elephants. This is yet another report on the ongoing human-elephant conflict in our country. Villagers in Palagala in Kakirava are severely inconvenienced due to the prevailing human-elephant conflict. Of the many local villages facing this problem is the Karavila village located adjacent to an elephant pass situated in between the Kahalapallakale Wildlife Sanctuary and the Kalavava Wildlife Sanctuary. The ongoing human elephant conflict has not only caused damage to the properties of these individuals, but have also claimed the lives of their loved ones. This electric fence, which is four kilometers in length, that once served as the only solution to the human elephant conflict, has been damaged by a group of unidentified individuals, only adding to the burden of these locals. As claimed by locals, the reason for the damage is due to the opposition of a group of individuals currently residing in a property on the other side of the fence. A tense situation arose when subject minister SM Chandra Sena arrived at the property in question. <laughs> Following the tense situation, Minister Chandra Sena left the premises. <laughs> A group of youth in Pulan Narua who were engaged in different occupations have resorted to farming at present. Agricultural lands in Biso Bandara area in the Pulan Narua district have been abandoned in the recent past as they were located on marshy lands. The All Ceylon Farmers Federation and the Kaudula Farmers Federation worked tirelessly in order to combat this issue. 
These farmers are setting a precedent for all of us as they prepare to cultivate and reap a harvest on these lands which have been abandoned for several years. This group of youth hopes to distribute the harvest among the destitute in the village. The theme song of the Gammed, the Nagatmi Sri Lanka campaign has garnered much popularity since its debut. It has acted as a harbinger of hope. On that note, we leave you tonight with yet another rendition of Nagatimu Sri Lanka. I'm Zinat Musafa and tonight's interpreter was Tarka Gabriel. Thank you for watching News First. Good night. <laughs> Sri Lanka.